Hey everybody, Summer Terry here from Superior Therapy and I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a run through of our PEMF equipment and how we use our Respond equipment every single day in our therapy barn. So kind of to save time, we went ahead, we put our neck piece on, we put our blanket on, we put everything on the horse. That way you could just kind of see the different ways that we use things and the different ways that you can ha use this really, really versatile equipment. So the first thing that we start with for safety reasons, we always unplug our equipment from the battery. So this is the control box here. The battery is going to be on the off side. So anytime we take our equipment on or off a horse, we just unplug it just for safety's sake. So when you plug your battery in, it's going to automatically start and it's going to start at the 15 setting. So the difference in your settings, 15, 20, 30, these are our acute settings for like injuries that have just happened, soft tissue tears, that type of thing, anything that's gonna be fresh, that's got heat or swelling in it. And then as you move on through, the 60 setting is really good for chronic problems and it's also the strongest setting. So it's gonna have the most blood flow, it's gonna provide the most circulation throughout the body. So in the therapy barn, we have a tendency to start with everything on the 60 setting and if the horse doesn't tolerate it well, then we back down to a setting that better fits the problem that we're working with. Now, the maxi pulse equipment, this type of battery is going to be found on the, neck, the standalone neck piece, the standalone neck leg wraps. Um, it's also going to be found on the dog beds and some of the smaller animal products. And it's just basically a low, medium, high frequency, 30 minute treatment or 60 minute treatment. The blanket is gonna be set on a 30 minute timer. So it's gonna automatically click, click off after 30 minutes. And if you wanna do an hour treatment, you just simply restart the blanket. So one of the things that we really, really like about it is how safe this equipment is. We have youth rodeo kids that are able to use it. You know, it, it's great equipment for just the open rider, the fraternity rider, and then also in a veterinary clinic setting, as well as in a rehab setting. So each of these coils is going to penetrate approximately 15 inches through the horse. So by having the coils follow the whole length of the horse, we're able to do a full body treatment pretty much in, in 30 minutes or like I said, your hour if you want to do the hour setting. And the nice thing about it too is that you can't over treat with it. There's very, very minimal risk of over treating or having any adverse effects of using the equipment. So in a rehab setting, like it's really, really helpful because like I kind of laugh and say like you can set it and forget it, but honestly, it's really that safe. So we're able to do PEMF treatments while we're treading horses or while we're taking something else outside, because as long as the horse is going to stand still with the blanket on, you don't necessarily have to be there to attend the equipment while it's working. And so from like a competition standpoint, the great thing about this equipment is that it increases the oxygen content in the blood by about 200%. So even a healthy horse is going to benefit from having PEMF and having the treatments done just because they're going to run harder. You know, you feel better, you look better, you train harder, you perform better. You know, we're all, we're all looking for that faster time. We're looking for that stronger, stouter horse. We're looking to jump higher. We're looking to run farther. And this is one of the things that really, really gives us that advantage, but also from a really, really safe point of being appropriate for any type of horse. And you don't have to be a therapist to run this equipment. One of the things that I really try to stress to my customers is I want you to be able to take care of your horse once you get that horse home from my facility. So if the only things I have to offer you are things that only a therapist can run, I'm not serving my customers for the future. I'm not serving them for the long point. And so by having equipment like this, it's very simple and it's engineered to be simple, but it's effective. It's backed by research. They have, they've been in business since 1983. And so they have decades of research proving why this equipment works. So I'm gonna show a little bit on the leg wraps here. These are the same type of coils that you're gonna find in the blanket. And as you can see, I've kind of got all these wraps put on this horse a little bit differently. Um, this is kind of your textbook, like when you go to Respond's website, this is how you're gonna see these leg boots used. Again, these are on an independent battery. They also make an all-in-one unit that 
has attachments, it has cable attachments that come down and everything runs off a single battery. For a therapy standpoint, I feel like the fewer cords, the better, and the fewer things you've got to get a horse hung up in. So everything that we have has a standalone battery pack. Like I just feel like it's worth the extra money to have one more safety measure in place. So you'll see the coils here at the bottom. These are treating, you know, any type of abscess, any type of hoof problems. The coils on the side are going to treat your suspensories, any type of soft tissue thing that you're going to have from the knee down. Um, you can also flip this upside down and you can use these coils to treat a knee injury. And I basically secure it with a polo wrap. And so the closer the coils are to the affected area that you're trying to treat, obviously that's going to be the better. But because of the lymphatic system, the circulatory system of the horse, even treating down here is still going to increase circulation in this portion of the leg because you're drawing that through and the lymphatic system is going to help return that blood flow, push any fluid back out into the body and the body's just going to disperse it and it goes on its way. So moving back to the back leg here, I have this wrap on just kind of, you know, textbook how you're going to see on the site. And then when we turn this horse around, I'm going to show you how to treat a hawk using the same leg wraps. So these are super, super versatile. And I've had people that have started with just a leg wrap and have stepped it down the spine and essentially treated the entire spine of the horse using just a leg wrap. Uh, we've had mini ponies that we've used the neck piece on. We, you can throw this over a mini pony and it's pretty much the same size of blanket that you're going to need for one. And so, I mean, like, we've been able to use this equipment for so many different things. And talking a little bit about conditions that we treat, uh, one thing that we see a lot is EPM. And with these EPM horses, there's a lot of misinformation out there that you can't do PEMF treatments on a horse that's being treated for EPM. The way this system is set up, because it works on a lower frequency, we're able to treat these EPM horses and we're boosting their immune system. We're helping decrease that inflammation. We're helping decrease the nerve firing and the pain and all of the things that go along with that condition by treating the whole body at the same time. You know, we don't have to worry about whether or not it's causing the protozoa to migrate or whether we're chasing the protozoa throughout the body, which is what some of the misinformation kind of claims. Um, again, going, going back to the coils, we're pretty well treating the whole body through this treatment. We see a lot of horses, like we really like the hamstring coils. Um, you can also attach a strap back here that kind of gets that a little closer in proximity to where your hamstrings set. And so we treat a lot of breakaway horses, calf roping horses, reiners, cutters, anything that's going to have to get on their hind end, their hamstrings are naturally going to be tighter. And then if you look under here, we also have a coil that sits on the inside of the stifle. So, you know, in my opinion, I feel like you're getting a lot of really, really good stifle coverage just from the bottom coil here. But then they've added just the extra effects of having this plate here with a separate coil in it that is just going to make sure you're, you're covering every area of that stifle. And so that just, this coil just hangs loose and, and free and you're able to move it for the size of the horse. You either take it up or let it out a little bit longer if you need to treat below that. Okay, so going back to using the leg wraps here, I have this leg wrap on upside down using it to treat a hawk. And the reason I like to use the wraps this way, I basically just secure them with a polo wrap. The biggest thing you've got to watch is to make sure you don't have a horse knock this battery off the back because those are, you know, not terribly expensive to replace, but we don't want to be replacing them all the time. And so I, I usually go to this setup versus doing the hawk wrap because most of the time when you have a problem with a hawk, that swelling is going to go ahead and go on down the leg. So by having the bottom coils going all the way to here, I'm treating that swelling in the area as it continues down, and I'm just covering a bigger space area at the same time. So I'm still able to treat the primary cause of the pain as well as the secondary cause and the secondary things that go along with having an injury to this area. So, you know, like for example, if you've got a curbed hawk or you've got a horse that's got arthritis or, or even just a horse that stalks up in the stall, because of having arthritic hawks, I feel like by covering more space area, you're gonna get a more thorough treatment. And then going back up to this leg wrap, 
we actually have this one on backwards. And the reason we do this on horses is because some of the horses that have tendon and ligament soft tissue injuries, they tend to just simply not like the battery pack being on the front because that puts the most of the weight kind of distributed on the front of the leg. Well, if you have an injury on the back of the leg already, that horse is uncomfortable with the leg being pulled forward. And even though these aren't that heavy, when you've got a sprain or a strain or especially a tear, a little bit of weight means a big, makes a big difference. And so, you know, again, being safe, making sure your battery pack is, you're monitoring this to make sure the horse doesn't reach up and kick the battery pack off. But we treat a lot of horses this way. Um, we also treat a lot of abscesses. We like to have these coils really close directly to the heels of the horse if you're treating an abscess that's trying to come out of the backside um, or in the heel area. You know, if I had an abscess that I thought was going to come out of the front of the hoof or out of the bottom, I would probably still tend to use the setup that's on the other side where the coils are on the front of the hoof. The thing to remember is there's really not a wrong way to treat because as long as the coils are covering the area of issue, you're going to get pulsation there. It's penetrating, it's doing its job, especially on the legs. You're able to treat the whole leg as you're going through. And let's talk a little bit about the neck wrap. So you'll see this strap up here. This is designed to kind of loop through a halter and hold this a little bit closer where you can treat these points up here, which are really, really important for EPM horses. So we usually loop that through there unless it makes the horse uncomfortable. Some horses will want to set back. And if they do, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. We can have it on there loose because again, you know, we're covering a big space area with each of these coils. So it's not necessary for that to be hooked, but in an ideal situation, we would probably go ahead and hook it. The other thing you will notice is I have just a carabiner clip and mine is run through the back of my battery pack and I hook it to the handle of the blanket. And reason being, if I have a horse tied in a stall and I don't have this hooked and that horse leans down, leans their head down, this blanket is, this is going to slide forward and hit them in the back of the head. And a lot of times you have to worry about them setting back. And so it's going to come with a stretchy cord but this is just kind of my preference and my little tip and tidbit that I've learned over the years is that won't stretch or give. So this is the farthest that's going to go, which keeps the horse a little bit more comfortable and making sure I, I'm all about trying to prevent an accident if possible, because it's, it's a lot easier to prevent one than to have to try to clean up after one. So let's talk a little bit about the conditions that PEMF treats. So we were very familiar with kind of the increasing circulation, decreasing pain and inflammation, and also, you know, working with joint pain, ulcers, that type of thing. Like those are super common problems in the performance horse industry. And so, you know, like people are really, really familiar with those. So the PEMF equipment works on a cellular level. Like it just basically helps these little tiny cells talk to each other and when you have enough of these cells that are little bitty, but they are building and talking to each other, then you're going to end up with overall improvements throughout the whole body, which makes the horse perform better. They're going to be stronger. It's also going to start to help the body correct imbalances and problems within the system. So by relaxing and helping eliminate some of the pain issues, ulcers are going to go away. Um, especially on the, these EPM horses, by increasing their immune system and by decreasing the inflammation and the pain, that's going to help the medicine that comes from your vet to work a little more efficiently where you're able to really, really tackle that problem. And so going back to a performance standpoint, these horses, I mean, we ask a lot of them. We, we put a really, really large demand on these horses, and most of them we haul year-round, so we're on the road with them and it takes a, an actual, it's a feat for a horse to be able to stand in a trailer going down the road. It takes a lot of muscle to just hold that horse up and for them to not get sore traveling in a trailer. And then we go to the event and we're stalled on concrete. We don't always know the conditions. Maybe our stalls would be smaller than what our horses are used to. Or if you're somebody like me, my horses stay out in a pasture until I go to a show and that's the only time they're stalled. 
And when you change that one element or you change that one condition in that horse, then they're more susceptible to stocking up. They're more susceptible to not having that flexibility in their joints, flexibility in their muscles that they might have if they were at home in their paddock. And so I feel like it's really, really important not only to manage and treat these things like joint pain and all these different conditions, but it's important to prevent them as well because the more things as horse owners that we can prevent, the better we are in the long run and it's gonna save us vet bills. I mean, we all really, really enjoy having a vet that we work close with, but it's all good if we don't have to see them as often as well. And that's one of the reasons that this equipment is available to the horse owner is to be able to you know, treat your horse daily at home. Because one thing about this equipment as well is by treating at a lower frequency, you can treat more often without worry of burning or overuse or any adverse effects. And so that's a benefit in itself to be able to do these small treatments every day. Because if you're monitoring swelling on a leg or you're monitoring the progress of your horse, if you're doing something with them every single day, you're gonna notice any changes, even if they're just a, a little subtle change. And so one of the things that we look for with this equipment, like as this mare is yawning, like she's obviously enjoying this treatment. Like she's yawning, she's licking her lips. She's got a really, really soft eye. And so we, that's one of the ways that we treat when we're working with muscle pain and things like that. Um, as these treatments go on, the secondary symptoms start to peel away and sometimes reveal the primary problem or the problem eliminates itself altogether. But as a therapist, we're constantly watching for that licking and chewing. We're looking for a state of relaxation in the horse because if this mare had a, an acute injury, something with swelling, something with heat that just happened, she probably wouldn't appreciate this blanket being on the higher setting or the leg wraps being on the highest setting. And so that's where kind of judging your horse and having your horsemanship comes into play. You know, if you throw this blanket on and they're, they're trying to move around, they're trying to shake the blanket off, they're, they're just uncomfortable, we will back the setting down until we find one that's appropriate for the situation that we're working. Because it's very important, in my opinion, for a horse, we don't want to force a treatment on them. We want them to enjoy it. Because if a treatment's uncomfortable, this horse is going to become uncomfortable and then they're going to be hard to treat. They're not going to look forward to the treatments and it just makes them a lot harder to deal with in a rehab setting. So we get a lot of questions about when's an appropriate time to put this equipment on in a competition setting like pre-race and post-race, how to use it. And there's really not an exact science to that because every horse is an individual. Every horse is going to be different. So one thing I found in my past experience, I had a horse that had PSSM that I pro rodeoed on. And in his case, I actually did not use the blanket the day of competition. I did not use it before because even on the lower settings, he would get so amped up and he was so ready to run and so eager to run, he would end up overrunning his barrels. And in, in my years of practice, I've seen that happen more than once. And it's always PSSM horses. So I feel like because they're similar to a person that has fibromyalgia, like there's a lot of the PSSM that has to do with the nerve endings and those horses are very, very sensitive horses anyway. I would tend to treat my horse the night before I actually had to enter the race or the night before I was going to run. And then I would come back and I would follow up with a treatment post race. So in, in that case, it worked really, really well. Now in an average horse, we would do like a, a setting on 60, you know, probably a couple hours out before we're going to saddle and run because we really want to pump that blood flow. We want to pump that oxygen. We want that horse to be able to perform their best. But I never would advise anybody to just start with trying this. Like you always want to see how it works with your horse and you want to figure out a plan of action before you go to the barrel race. Now, post race, um, you could do like a 15 or a 30 uh, setting post race you could do a setting on like a 15 or a 30 just because we want to kind of relax we want that horse to kind of tone down and he doesn't need nearly as much blood flow after he's run we want him to just relax and recover and kind of reset his body and be ready for the next day of competition so there's kind of your difference in how you would use the settings pre and post race now, one of the other things that's really, really nice about this blanket is 
because this runs on a battery pack, you can use this same day at the racetrack or same day at Yousef product. Or because the blanket runs on a battery pack, you can use this same day at the racetrack or same day at a Yousef sanctioned event. And because the rule states on PEMF equipment, if it plugs into a wall, it can't be used same day a race. Where ours operates off of a battery pack on its own, you can use it before a race. And so we have a lot of racehorse barns that really, really like this equipment. And it's because they can use it pre-race and it just helps their horses feel so much better. We also have a plethora of people in the youth rodeo industry that really, really like these blankets because they're running older horses that have been there, done that. These horses are aged, they have arthritis, and they're that horse that's gonna kind of live out their life helping this kid begin their career in rodeo. And so people are trying to step up and take these preventative measures to keep their horses performing. And I think on an average, what we're gonna end up seeing is horses performing longer and to older ages and still being able to be retired sound or being able to be maintained where 15 or 20 years ago, those horses would have had to be retired or in some cases put down. And so by being able to do these full body treatments and by providing a, an equipment that can be safely used at your own trailer and in your own barn, we're able to further continue the care of our equine athletes into the future. So one other thing that we have that we treat legs and hoof injuries with is the iron foot hoof pad. And the way it's different than the leg wraps is the fact that the horse is standing on the coil. So the coils are kind of embedded in this rubber. And so it's pulsating up the leg versus just having a wrap wrapped around it. And I tend to use this more on horses that don't want to stand still with the wraps on or when I'm treating wounds or anything like that, that they may seep a little bit of liquid or they may seep fluid from an abscess that's still draining. And this is just a little bit easier to clean up because I can wipe off versus getting it on the wrap. And so when we're treating wounds, we want to make sure that the wound has started healing, that it's actually clotted. Because if you have a fresh wound that's still bleeding, when you increase circulation, what's going to happen? It's going to continue to bleed more. And by rushing all that circulation to the area, we're actually not aiding in the healing at that point. But once there's a scab on there, the wound has stopped bleeding. Then if it's a very, very deep wound, we're going to start a little bit farther away from it. And then we're going to work our way to that area. So, you know, say I had an overreach here that had already busted out and it was still bleeding or trying to leak fluid, I could still put this horse on the hoof pad because if this horse gets uncomfortable with the treatment, this horse can kind of step off, break the, hold on, help me, um, kind of, thank you, whoever said that. So if I have a wound right here that I'm treating and the pulsation is a little bit too much for this horse, she can actually step forward off of there and break that electrical current, and then most horses will step right back to it. Another thing you'll see as the circulation increases in the lower leg, you'll start to see sweat rings on the hoof pad itself, just from that circulation coming down and providing a little bit more heat and things in, that, in the feet. And by talking about creating heat, we're not talking about inflammation type of heat, we're talking about the circulation. So you have a horse that stood on this hoof pad for 30 minutes, it's not uncommon to actually see sweat rings when they take a step off. And so that's actually one of the good things that we look for. Because when you're treating lower leg and hoof injuries, one thing you've got to remember is that's the farthest body part away from the heart. So they don't have as good a circulation down there as they're gonna have through the rest of the body. The other thing that we have to take into consideration is, you know, how does the blood get pumped from the hoof back into the body? And it's through the frog of the foot. So if you have these horses that have injuries to this frog or they just have poor feet condition in general, being able to kind of aid in the growth of that hoof and the growth of that frog is gonna help serve the horse for the long run because those feet are going to grow better we're going to be able to grow out any problem areas we're going to be able to shoe more often because we've got growth 
and then we can get back to creating that original balance that we were searching for in the beginning.